Hello people, in this video let us look at the initial investigation protocol for an infertile couple. Actually here we are looking for infertile female because um, we have assumed that uh, the man's semen analysis has come fine. So in this part we will be looking at the female partner. First of all you want to know if she is ovulating. Okay? For finding out whether she is ovulating you can check the basal body temperature. You can do an endometrial biopsy and find out whether it is a secretory type which would be an ovulatory type of uh, uh, endometrium, isn't it? Then you can check for the cervical mucus. At that particular days of ovulation the cervical mucus will be thin. right? During ovulation the cervical mucus will be thin. And then coming to serum progesterone if it is uh, less than 6 it is ovulatory. Okay? If it is less than 3, it is anovulatory. That's what it says here. So very less is anovulatory and less than 6 will be ovulatory. Fine. So all this you will have to check whether she is ovulating. So these are the basic checks. Uh, basal body temperature, endometrial biopsy, cervical mucus study, serum, progesterone, LH, urinary LH, all that you can check to check whether she is ovulating. The other things that they are doing is further on, they are doing uh, for the tubal patency, etc. They are checking if the fallopian tubes are open. They are checking, uh, they are doing a hysterosalpingography or a laparoscopic chromotubation. Basically, a laparoscopy will help not just in diagnostics, it will also help in uh, fixing the issue. When you have gone via laparoscopy, you can remove some adhesions, etc. Uh, if they are present. So, laparoscopic um, uh, action will not just be a diagnostic, it will, it will not just be an investigation, you can also fix the issue if it is there. Okay. So, uh, did you understand guys? This is the initial investigation protocol for um, actually female uh, infertility, what they have explained here, ovarian, basal body temperature you will check, if it is biphasic it is ovulatory, this is uh, good, right, biphasic is good, ovulatory, endometrial, uh, if it is secretory then it will be um, uh, good, right, so you can understand that, then cervical mucus, it should be during ovulation, it will be clear, watery, right, and uh, in other days it can be thick, coming to serum progesterone, if it is less than 6, it is ovulatory, but less, um, uh, less than 3 is anovulatory. Okay? Look at this table guys in the textbook. Uh, basically here they are checking ovulation. We already told you how will you check for ov ovulation. You will check for basal body temperature. Uh, throughout the cycle you can check uh, basically biphasic pattern. If it is there it is good. Then coming to endometrial biopsy. Uh, biopsy you should see that there should be secretory endometrium during this time. Right? During um, uh, 21 to 23 it should be secretory. Day 21 to 23 of the cycle it should be secretory. Cervical mucus during the ovulation, that is 12 to 14th day, it should be clear and watery, right? It should, the fern pattern should be there, the threadability should be there, right? All that uh, you should understand how the cervical mucus should be during ovulation. Threadability, fern pattern should be there for the cervical mucus. Then coming to vaginal cytology, if you check the cytology of the vagina, vagina will have pyknotic cells, discrete cells. What are you talking about here? Vaginal cells. Okay, then coming to serum progesterone. Look at this uh, day 8. Day 8 they are saying less than 1 nanogram per ml. And after that day 21 it should be greater than 6. Okay, so somewhere 1 to 6 they are saying. Then serum LH. Um, uh, they are checking about serum LH and urinary LH also guys. So LH surge will be there where? LH surge will be? Ovulation. Ovulation will happen after an LH surge. So about 10 to 12 hours after an LH surge, an ovulation will occur. Transvaginal sonography, you will check for the follicles, how big the follicles are, which will release the release the egg, right? And then you can do a laparoscopy to check that uh, whether there is a recent corpus luteum, which will tell you that um, ovulation has happened or not. Look at this biphasic uh, basal body temperature chart. Biphasic it should be. After ovulation has occurred, so this is ovulation. After ovulation has occurred, the temperature has increased. Before the temperature is low. Okay, but very small difference. 0.4 here it is and here it is 0.4. So total is what? Around 0.8 of a difference? No, wait, wait, wait. 0.6 plus 0.4. 1 degree difference, isn't it? 1 degree Fahrenheit difference, isn't it? Now guys, let us move on to the tubal factors. You are going to check for the tubes, fallopian tubes, how they are. Here they have done a hysterosalpingogram. You can see here, the dye has gone from here to here. It has gone through these thin tubes, right? So you will know whether the tubes are patent or not on both sides. Bilateral. But you can see that here, the hysterosalpingography, okay? Similarly, you have a laparoscopy dye test. You have some insulfation test, okay? 
sono hystero uh, hysterosalpingography some ultrasound uh, hysterosalpingography they are talking about and then phalloscopy can you remember all these look at this guys uh, laparoscopic in uh, check you know it's not only diagnostic it is operative also you can fix the issue like you can do ovarian drilling is it reconstructive tubal surgeries then adhesiolysis you can break some adhesions if they are present you can also do gamete intrafallopian transfer zygote intrafallopian transfer etc so laparoscopically you can check for the tubes the ovaries the uterus the peritoneal factors and you can also treat appropriately last thing here is the cervical so they are doing a post coital test and a cervical sp uh, sperm cervical mucus contact test this is actually an in vitro test okay where they are checking for antibodies to the sperm if there is antibodies to the sperm then it is very difficult to get pregnant isn't it post coital test i don't think they do now basically they will check if the sperms are motile any motile sperms are there they will check look at this photo here guys they are showing that the sperms are able to enter so this is the estrogenic effect on cervical mucus and this one the sperms are not able to enter because this is the progesterone effect it hinders the penetration right as yes, this insulfation test means what insulfation test is actually where they are putting carbon dioxide and they are checking if the air is air is going through okay through the tubes to the peritoneal cavity so basically this test is also called as rubin's test guys and uh, you can see here that uh, if the uh this will tell you if the tubes are patent okay so how do you know a person is uh, ovulating menstrual history you can take if she has regular cycles etc and uh, they can check the basal body temperature cervical mucus they can check vaginal cytology you can do hormone you can estimate for estrogen progesterone uh, lh uh, urine lh serum lh then you can do endometrial biopsy to check if it is secretory sonography transvaginal uh, uh, ultrasound you can uh, do you can check for uh, everything right tubes ovary everything you can check in this then you can do laparoscopy and if it is um, uh, uh, if they get pregnant then you obviously know that they have ovulated right they are ovulating so all these are indirect methods direct you can do laparoscopy conclusive is pregnancy okay guys here you can see that they have done a tubation they are checking with some dye and they are showing the patency of the tubes with spillage of the dye so here is the fallopian tube they have marked and this is the fimbrial end of the tube so here they have shown the dye the dye has gone through the tube to the peritoneal cavity is it methylene blue blue color dye so this is the investigation protocol for uh, infertile uh, female i am saying here ovary basal body temperature endometrial biopsy cervical mucus study all the fern pattern etc progesterone lh L, uh, estrogen you will check then hsg hysterosalpingography laparoscopy oh guys under this cervical mucus study you have something called as the fern test and the spin barkett effect okay so basically in fern test actually the cervical mucus they say is very beautiful so it has a fern like pattern before ovulation look at this so they the patients themselves can uh, you know this is under a microscope i'm guessing so basically they are checking for the fern pattern so they are putting the cervical mucus on a glass slide and they are observing it okay under the microscope for fern pattern then uh, there is something called as the spin barkett effect where the consistency of the mucus right the mucus will be thick and elastic at the beginning of the secretory phase and the mucus can be stretched like a thread here they are saying that after ovulation the elasticity of elasticity of the mucus is decreased after ovulation So guys in this video we have looked at is the person ovulating or not ovulation right we have we have focused on the question whether she is ovulating or not okay so here you can see the cervical mucus is allowing the penetration of the sperms estrogenic effect once the mucus is um, having progesterone effect it will not leave the sperms inside so that's it for now guys in this video we have not looked at treatment part only the investigations to know whether she is ovulating okay bye bye